Do you find that you get into relationships with people who are unempathic, cruel, unkind, neglectful of you, who betray you in multiple ways, again and again and again? Do you ever wonder if it's you, if there's something about you that attracts these people into your life? My name's Ruthann. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm an expert in relationships and issues of narcissism. In this video, I'm going to help you understand how previous narcissistic relationships can leave you vulnerable to future narcissistic relationships, how this is a completely understandable pattern, and it is definitely not your fault. And by understanding those patterns, hopefully you can begin to find ways to break free from them, to find mutually respectful and reciprocal relationships where you give and receive the love and the respect that you deserve. If you have a narcissistic parent or you've been through a key relationship in your life with someone who is highly narcissistic, maybe a long-standing romantic relationship, it will have affected how you see yourself. You may come to see yourself as never good enough, as someone who is going to be abandoned and neglected. And you may develop ways of coping with that. You may develop ways of never saying no, always trying to please the other person, sacrificing yourself in an attempt to win over their attention and their affection, to get them to love you and cherish you. And those kind of patterns serve narcissistic people very, very well. How wonderful to have a partner who is very happy to take the blame for everything that goes wrong who is quick to apologize, who will sacrifice themselves for your needs and wants, who won't hold you accountable, who probably isn't going to stand up to you because they may not know how to stand up to you or have good boundaries. And they fear if they do that you're going to abandon and reject them and they're going to end up alone and miserable and hurting and feeling not good enough. And if you haven't had good experiences in relationships, experience of being accepted for who you are, for having someone who respects your boundaries and communicates theirs in a healthy and peaceful and non-aggressive way. You haven't had the experience of someone else taking responsibility for their part in a relationship and being willing to apologize to you without defensiveness. If you haven't had the experience of being seen, of being known for who you are, then it can be very difficult to imagine that anything else is possible. And of course, that leaves you feeling alone, despairing and hopeless and really longing for love, respect, connection and acceptance. It may be very hard for you to imagine being in a relationship where you're loved and cherished, where you're not required to beat yourself up and criticize yourself, apologize all the time and tiptoe around, always trying to please another person. And ignoring your own feelings and needs can feel incredibly familiar and natural. And a narcissistic person may hold a particular appeal to you. Because at the beginning of a narcissistic relationship, there's usually love bombing. There's usually the promise of ideal love, of a relationship that's going to be special, that's going to meet all your needs, that's going to be all consuming and all perfect. The flattery, the admiration, the gifts, the sense of specialness when you're being love bombed can feel irresistible. It can be appealing to anybody when it taps into your deepest longing, your insecurity, and your fear that a healthy, respectful relationship may never be on the cards for you. It lures you in, thinking that here is someone who's going to love me completely, see me as special have a relationship that's all consuming and meets all of my needs. And when that love bombing turns to denigration, to devaluing, to putting you down and criticizing you, if you don't have a secure and steady sense of yourself to fall back on, or if memories of relationships where you are respected and cherished and loved for who you are seem like very distant memories, it can be very difficult for you to hold your boundaries, to recognize what's going on, to leave and get out, and instead you return to the old behaviors of self-sacrificing, people-pleasing, never saying no, striving to please, striving to win over the other person, responding by shutting down your own needs, by becoming quiet, 
by trying to please and placate the other person, apologizing to them incessantly, even though you've done nothing wrong, taking on the blame and responsibility for things that they should take some blame and responsibility for. They can feel like second nature, automatic and completely natural responses. The alternatives may not come easily to you. And of course, if you don't have good skills and assertiveness and having firm boundaries, Trying to learn those skills in a relationship with someone who's highly narcissistic, that's impossible. It's like trying to learn how to swim by jumping into a sea full of sharks. And so it can feel like just too much to manage this relationship or get out of this relationship. And you can feel very, very stuck. And when you do get out of that relationship, you do so hurt, bruised, beaten up, really doubting and questioning yourself and your reality lacking confidence in your ability to have healthy relationships, longing to be loved and cherished and accepted. And what could be more appealing to the next narcissist to swoop in and rescue you, your nightmare in shining armor, ready to love bomb you once again. This is an incredibly vicious cycle, but don't feel hopeless. All is not lost. Repeated narcissistic relationships are not inevitable. The world is not full of narcissists. Now, there are plenty of narcissists. By some estimates, about 1% of the population are narcissists. By other estimates, maybe 4 or 5%. But that means that the majority of people, 95 to 99%, are not narcissists. If you've just left a narcissistic relationship, here are some ways that you can break the cycle of repeated narcissistic relationships. First of all, the most important relationship for you to develop and work on is the relationship that you have with yourself. Now, you may be hurting and bruised. You may even have physical or mental health problems as a result of the narcissistic relationship you've been in. You might be suffering with anxiety or depression, or even in some cases, post-traumatic stress disorder. If that's the case, do seek good help. Seek medical care for your physical and mental health. Seek psychological therapy. Treat your depression, your anxiety, and your PTSD. That's important. You need to start by really looking after yourself. And sometimes that means getting some professional help. But it can also involve taking really good day-to-day care of yourself. Give yourself the opportunity to get good sleep. Eat well. Take some gentle exercise. Get out in the fresh air. See some friends and engage in activities that are important to you. All of that can help to rebuild your sense of yourself, to help you feel a little bit more at peace and at ease in the world. Be patient with yourself because this can be a long process and it takes time to rebuild your sense of yourself after narcissistic abuse. So forgive yourself, take it easy and go slow. And if you have difficult feelings and you will have difficult feelings, that's okay. Accept those difficult feelings. See if you can learn to hold them, to comfort yourself, to soothe yourself through those feelings. Build your self-compassion and your ability to respond to your own difficult feelings with the kind of kindness and comfort that you would respond to a friend who was going through difficult times and was experiencing difficult emotions. That can be a long process. But if you gently nurture yourself and are patient with yourself, over time, the intensity of those feelings will reduce a little bit. And you may find that there's a little bit more room for other feelings, for feelings of joy, for feelings of peace, for feelings of contentment, for feelings of pleasure. And explore the things that are important to you. Are there hobbies or interests that are important to you? Are there causes that are close to your heart that you might like to support? Are there other friendships and relationships within your family that you want to invest your time and your energy in? Work on the things that are important to you and give them time and attention. And intentionally embrace the values that you hold dear. Maybe values of good relationships, of peace, of contentment, of kindness. Embrace those values and take pride in yourself. Give yourself the respect that you deserve. And see if you can build a wide range of relationships and friendships. Narcissistic people rely on you being isolated in order to exert power over you. So having a range of friendships and a range of people who are close to you can really be a buffer 
against future narcissistic abuse. And it also gives you the opportunity to explore different kinds of relationships and different kinds of friendships. Pay attention to how you are in different friendships and relationships. You're probably going to find that there are friendships where people take advantage of you, where you find it hard to say no. Pay attention and get curious about the friendships where you struggle to say no, where you sacrifice yourself, where you end up feeling exhausted and depleted. Those can be friendships where you can practice saying no and see what happens. But more importantly, pay attention to the friendships in your life that may not feel so big. The people who are undemanding towards you, the people who may be on the periphery. Narcissistic people are demanding of your time and they're demanding of your energy. And it can feel like everyone in the whole world is a narcissist, but I promise you they're not. There are people in your life with whom you could develop a mutually respectful friendship, but it may be easy to neglect those people because healthy people with good boundaries who are respectful don't intrude into your life. They don't invade. They're not demanding. So pay attention to see if there are more of those people in your life and see if you can extend an invitation to them. See if you can extend an invitation to spend more time with you to get to know you more and for you to get to know them. Be interested in the things that they're interested in and be willing to share the things that you're interested in as you're coming to discover more of yourself and more of the things that you value and enjoy. Making more invitations to open the door to more of those people in your life can help you learn new patterns, can help you learn to say no and experience what it is to have your no respected can help you learn what it is for someone to take genuine interest in you and for them to share with you their true vulnerable selves. It can also help you to be wise when the next love bombing narcissist comes along, ready to steer you off course. Because if you know yourself, you value yourself, you respect yourself, and you have a range of friendships and relationships to draw on for support. You're going to really strengthen yourself against narcissistic people and even more importantly, open the door to people who will treat you with kindness and respect. I hope this video has been helpful and I'd love to hear what you think. What's your experience been with repeated narcissistic relationships and have you managed to break free? If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe so you can see more on narcissism and recovery after narcissistic abuse. I look forward to seeing you next time. And in the meantime, take good care.